In this video, we're going to talk about some defrost termination and fan delay. Now, the whole purpose of defrost termination and fan delay is that we need to be able to take the system out of defrost so that we're no longer pu putting heat into the box, okay, once the ice is melted. Because remember, the whole purpose of defrost is to melt the ice off the evaporator. So once the ice is melted, what's the point in keeping the system in a state where it's continuing to add box, add heat to a cool environment and an environment we want to keep cool? So the defrost termination and fan delay control is a temperature actuated single pole double throw switch, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, with a remote sensing bulb. This control can be adjustable. It's most often mounted directly to the evaporator but it can also be a remote sensing bulb that's mounted high on the evaporator where the frost is li least likely to clear last. In other words, we want this thermostat or this control to be in a location where the frost is going to stay the longest. The function of this is to terminate defrost when the evaporator coil has been defrosted and also to delay the evaporator fans from coming on immediately after defrost. Because remember, once I have a warm coil, I also have moisture. I don't want to blow that moisture around the space I'm trying to cool, especially if it's like in a deep freeze, because that moisture is going to create frost and almost like snow all over the place. So we want that moisture to refreeze on the coil after some of it's drained away. So the defrost time clocks can be programmed for certain defrost duration periods. This is a time duration set at the time clock in minute intervals. For example, a defrost time clock on a freezer can be programmed to defrost every six hours and have the defrost increments of 40 minutes. However, there's a lot of times when the freezer does not need the entire 40 minutes to defrost. Okay, it could have just been in a defrost, could be overnight where the door's not being opened as frequently, and this could happen when the freezer's not being used a lot. Okay. This is where the defrost termination part of the control comes into play. Once the normally open contacts of the defrost time control have been closed, the units in defrost, the defrost heaters will emit heat and the fr frost will be melting off the evaporator coil. Usually takes about 10 minutes for all of the frost to be removed from the evaporator. This leaves still 30 minutes left in the defrost cycle. Now, we have two options here. We can either figure out a way to pull the uh, defrost out of defrost, in other words, end the cycle, or we can continue to add heat to an evaporator for an additional 20 minutes. So sometimes the system will come with an optional safety switch, sometimes referred to as a defrost limit control in series with the defrost heater. The limit will open and take the defrost heaters out of the circuit. However, the defrost heater timer will still have the full 30 minutes left in the defrost mode. The system will sit idle and the product load will suffer in the temperature because of no refrigeration for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, the defrost timer will finally switch over to refrigeration and the, defro and the evaporator fans will start up immediately blowing this warm moist air through the box. This will pull the system under extremely high loads causing high amperage draws that may overload the compressor to the point where its internal and external overlays may open. So what we use to prevent this is we use the defrost termination fan delay switch. Basically, it's a double throw single pole thermostat. Okay, once the normally open contacts on the defrost timer close the units in defrost, the heaters heat up, melt the ice. This sensor will sense this heat and the contacts between two and three will close. In other words, the thermostat will move to its hot position, which is right between two and three because again, rise on temperature increase. This will energize a defrost termination solenoid, or sometimes known as a release solenoid and more often known as a clutch solenoid in the time clock, which will mechanically push the system back into refrigeration. 
This action by the defrost termination solenoids prevents the system from sitting idle for 30 minutes in defrost with the heater off or on. And it puts the system back into refrigeration mode. Now, the system is back running in a normal mode. The evaporator fan will be delayed from coming on because the switch is still in the, the heat sensitive defrost termination control is still in the position two to three. So until one and two of the defrost termination fan close, the fan will not come on. This usually happens between 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit and it's controlled by again by the remote bulb. That is an adjustable setting on most controls that they let the evaporator coil pre-chill itself and get rid of some of the defrost heat in the coil. By delaying the fans, it prevents the suction pressures from getting too high after defrost and overloading the compressor when an automatic pump down system is not being used. This is one example of a defrost termination switch. This is, will mount directly on the side of the evaporator coil. You'll always be able to identify the DTT based on the three wires. Not the same color three wires, but three fire wires will be coming out of it. Okay, it's a single pole double throw device. It has a hot contact. Okay, in other words, it's the common. It has a cold contact, okay, as well. This is another type, and it's an adjustable remote bulb. Okay, so this might be mounted on the outside of the cooler or someplace else. The remote bulb will connect into the evaporator. Okay, the defrost termination fan control is mounted on the evaporator, usually on the high side of the evaporator. And it will not be in contact with the evaporator heaters. Or if it's hot gas, it will not be in contact with the coils because we don't want to terminate it until the ice is actually melted off of it. So defrost termination, fan control, again to terminate the defrost cycle once the heat is melted off the coil, it is an energy savings device, it is a device that it will actually protect the compressors and protect the product. The fan delay portion of it is just to make sure we're not warm, blowing warm, moist air around a frozen environment and cre it creates basically snow and frost buildup on the product.